Rogway here and we're doing another tutorial today. Today we're looking at special effects in Photoshop. Uh, some pretty cool stuff that we can do as far as lighting effects go and, and just different adjustment layers that uh, we can play around with here. So we're going to start by opening up the skate file. Just so you know, none of the images that are used here are my own. Uh, these were pulled off of Google and actually the tutorial itself is based off of a tutorial that I found online as well. So I don't take credit for it, but it is a good technique and uh, creates a really neat effect at the end. So here's our image of a skateboarder doing a ollie, uh, it looks like. And um, first thing what we want to do is we want to take out the background. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to double click the background layer to unlock it. There we go and I'm going to click the new layer button. I'm going to add a new layer underneath just by dragging it down. And I'm going to fill that with black. So we're going to edit fill, I'm going to fill it with black and I say OK. Now <clears throat> I could sit here with the magic wand or quick mask and remove the background from behind him. But to make your lives easier, what I've done is I've created a custom path. So if we go into paths, we see that there are two paths, path one, path two. We're going to use path one to begin. Now paths are a really excellent way to create a selection very quickly um, without having to recreate the selection over and over again or save the selection. Um, I'll show you how they work. So now that I've got a path that's been created around my subject, all I have to do on the Mac here is hold command and click the little thumbnail of the path. And now you can see that my skateboarder becomes a selection. I didn't have to go, I didn't have to paint anything. I I had to create the path. That was the hard part. But now it's easy. All I can all I do is by holding command make that a selection. So I'm going to go to my, back to my layers. Just click the tab to go back to layers. I'm going to go to layer 0 where my skateboarder is uh, hanging out and I'm going to go select inverse because I want to select the background. Now I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard. Press command D to deselect and now we've got the skateboarder on his own layer with a black background which is exactly what we want. Next what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of an effect to him. We're going to go to filter alright and we're going to look for the high pass filter which is under other we're going to go other, high pass. And to be honest, this is personal preference here, what you think looks good. We want to go fairly high. We just want to give them a bit of a more contrasty HDR type look. So I'm going to go pretty high up here, about 140, I'm going to hit OK. So you can see that that's kind of altered his color. We're going to go to window history, I'm um, just going to show you the before and after. You can see how it's kind of made a more punchy effect. This will help us later on for the effect that we're going for. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a bad cold, so I'm coughing quite a bit here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer. And we're going to call it lighting. Lighting. Or maybe even light FX. All right, light, light FX, light FX. There we go. And uh, what we're going to do with this layer, first of all, we're going to choose our brush. We're going to set our brush to uh, fairly soft, maybe about 50%. Let's go with that. And we're going to set it to a white. Now, you should see your cursor showing the brush size. If you don't, if you see that instead, hit the cap locks key. And use the brackets next to the P key to shrink down your brush size to something about that small. All right, so I'm at about 35 here. We're going to try that and we're going to see how it works. And I'm going to turn on enable airbrush style effects. I'll explain why in a second. If this doesn't work, well, we might have to try something else. We're going to make sure that the light effects layer is selected, as you can see here, and we're going to go back to our paths tab. This time we're going to click path 2, which as you can tell is a sort of squiggly line that goes over top of our subject. 
you know what, I'm gonna drop my brush size down a little more. I'm gonna go down to 25. And then with that selected, again, making sure that light effects is selected on the layers tab, we're gonna go to the path tab, select path two, and we're gonna click this little drop down in the corner of the palette, and we're gonna say stroke path. We're gonna make sure that brush is our option for stroking, and we're gonna go simulate pressure, and we're gonna hit okay. All right, and as you can see, we have a stroked path over our entire line that was created there, which kind of looks, well, it looks like a squiggle over top of them. It doesn't look like anything that cool yet. We're actually gonna undo that. We're gonna press Command Z, or we're gonna go back in our history, and we're gonna go and change this a little bit. We're gonna go to our brush, and we're gonna go to our brush options, which are right here. Click that open. All right, and we're just gonna take a look at our brush pressure. All right, we wanna make sure that our control is set to brush pressure and that this is set to brush, brush pen pressure. Sorry, I keep saying brush pressure, but it's pen pressure. Okay, we just wanna make sure that that's set properly. We're just gonna take a look at any other strange settings that may be in here. I'm kind of looking through as I'm doing the tutorial here. I'm looking for one specific thing that I don't seem to see here. Go to control, having pen pressure as well. Let's just make sure everything else is turned off. Okay. Now let's try that again. We're gonna go to path two. We're gonna go to stroke path, simulate pressure, hit okay. And now what we see when we do that, if it's set for a brush, a pen pressure, sorry. If it's set for pen pressure, now what we see is a line and uh, to deselect, we just click off of path two. Now we see a line that's kind of tapered. It gets thinner at the end and it becomes thicker in the middle. This is kind of simulating uh, the pressure that it might have taken with a pen to create this shape. It kind of looks more dynamic. It looks more um, interesting. So that's why we did that. All right, that was under the brush settings. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our layers and we're gonna make this line kind of look neon-ish. So with light effects layer selected, we're gonna click the FX tab at the bottom and we're gonna click Outer Glow. And with Outer Glow selected, we're going to pick a color here. Um, I like really vibrant sort of greens or pinks. Let's go with a pink and uh, a really vibrant color, a really bright color. We're gonna hit okay. And then we're going to adjust our spread and our size. And as you can tell, what happens is we end up with this kind of neon looking glowing line that's going over our subject in this case. So it kind of looks cool. And the nice thing about this is we can go back and we can change it to whatever color we want at any time just to get different effects. Now, I'm gonna stick with that sort of pink glow that uh, I had originally. And I'm gonna hit okay. So very quickly and easily using an effects, we've created this nice um, neon glow. Now what I want it to look like is, um, I want it to look like it's wrapping around our subject. Right now it just looks like it's pasted on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a layer mask. All right, just click that. And you see our layer splits into two. And I'm gonna choose the brush tool. I'm gonna to make sure that my brush is set to black. I'm gonna go up to my hardness and set it to about 75%. And now, using the brackets next to the P key, to the right of the P key. So we're gonna start by erasing the parts that actually go behind him. So um, let's start at this end. I'm going to erase Whoa, I took off way too much. And it does help to zoom in actually, rather than just winging it. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to zoom in because I'm messing up. I'm gonna zoom in on this 
line using the paintbrush. And I'm just going to get a little bit more of an accurate uh, painting here. So, okay, this one goes behind, then it comes in front, then this one would go behind. And you should try to be accurate as much as possible. This one goes in front, then this one would go behind. So I would erase it over here. Just like this. And you know, it's a tutorial. You don't know, it doesn't have to be perfect. This one comes in front, and then this one would go behind. All right, just like that. All right, now this one's coming in front of him and the board. This one's going to go behind. Come out under his hand. This one goes in front. This one goes behind. And the last one just comes in front. Now when I press Command-0, we can see that that kind of makes a cool effect. It looks like it's wrapping around him. Um, and creating this neat sort of glowing effect in the in the same time here. So that's the first part. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a, sort of a neat effect. Um, it might look really weird at first, but we're going to add this uh, interesting glow effect using custom brushes, and uh, it'll make a really neat final result. So let's make a new layer, and I'm going to call this light above. Okay, then I'm going to make another layer, and I'm going to call it Light Below. I'm going to drag Light Below underneath the skateboarder. So I got Light Above at the top, and I got Light Below down at the bottom. And we're going to load a custom brush. So I'm going to go to my brushes. I'm going to go to my brush options by clicking the down arrow, and I'm going to go Load Brushes. And in that folder, let me just find it here. Do, 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 do. Whoops, wrong week. Yeah, in that folder, there should be a file called wglightrays.abr. And that's a custom brush library. We're going to hit open. And it might give you an, um, a dialog that comes up asking what you want to do with it, um, just hit append if you see that come up. And if we look at the bottom of our brushes, now we got a bunch of brushes that are light brushes, which are kind of cool, light rays. So we're going to choose the ones that are, um, I, I like these two because there's a lot of light rays in them. And we're on, um, we should, sorry, we should actually be on the light below layer. And we're going to choose a gray color. So I'm going to go to about midway here and hit OK. I'm going to click just once. And you can see that we get these rays of light that kind of look streaky as they go through. And uh, I switch back to the move tool here. I'm going to press Command T to transform. And I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. So I'm going to go outside of the bounding box. I'm going to hold Shift and I'm going to go to 45 degrees, which is right there. And now I can just stretch this out a little bit before I hit return. And now my settings are saved. All right. To add a little bit of variation to this, a little bit of variety, I'm going to use the eraser tool. I'm going to set it super soft, zero so uh, hardness. I'm going to make it pretty big, large brush size. And I'm just going to click a few times along the edges so that these streaks look a little bit more random. Not so perfect. Even along the edges, you know, that, that wouldn't hurt either. Okay. Just so it doesn't look like a brush. Then I'm going to go to my light above layer. And I'm going to choose the brush once again. I'm going to change it to the other light streaks. And this time I'm going to set my brush color to white. And hit OK. And the same thing, I'm just going to click once to get those streaks on top of my skateboarder, which looks really weird. But I'm going to go Command T. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees by holding Shift once again. I'm going to just move it so it kind of overlaps. Same thing here, I'm going to stretch it a bit. 
and I'm going to hit enter. Same deal with the eraser. I'm just going to add some variation. This time I'm going to erase parts where it's cutting off my skateboarder. So even though it's above him, some parts will be above, but other parts are going to go behind. Okay, so it's going to kind of look like that where, you know, the light rays are cutting through parts of his body, maybe even a little bit of his board. And um, it's just what I want it to look like is like this light ray is kind of wrapping around him. Something like that. Okay, now it looks really weird, I'll admit, but we're going to add kind of a neat effect to the end here. And um, we could add glows and stuff to that as well, but we're going to leave it at like that. We're going to go to the um, adjustment layer and we're going to choose gradient map. And a gradient map is actually going to add a gradient map over the entire picture. And we're going to choose one that we like here. I'm going to choose this one, which goes from um, like a blue to an orange. That looks really weird. So we're going to change the blending mode to something like screen or lighten or multiply or soft light or overlay. Whatever we think looks good. And the cool thing about a gradient map is that it neutralizes or it puts all the makes the image look like it belongs together. It makes all the colors within that image look like they're from the same palette. So as you can see, we end up with a really neat effect. We got the light glowing around. We got the light rays shooting through plus the skateboarder. You know, this could be something used for a poster or for just an image manipulation in general. The cool thing about this is, you know, we can always go back like the effects here. For example, I can always go and change the color. Maybe Maybe now orange belongs better with this photo because it goes with the color. I can really quickly and easily do that, quickly and easily change that. All right? So it's kind of customizable even after the, the fact. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to save this as skateboarder or skate, I guess. Put it to my desktop. And we're done. All right? A couple things we learned here using custom brushes, using paths for the first time, all right, using adjustment layers to create that kind of an effect. Again, um, I'd like to see you guys use this, if you can, in your photos. Um, it'll help you with your manipulations and, and maybe to make uh, your photos look more interesting sometimes. Again, I'm not a huge fan of over, overly doing the effects, and in this case we did just for the sake of the tutorial, but it does make a really neat effect and it's kind of cool. All right, so make sure you save that and hand it in to me and uh, we're all good.